Access. We're live. What is it on Ruby? No, you're live. It says the Wi Fi is connected. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I do. I just checked. I, I just told you these things. Ah, we're here, Michael. Don't worry. We're here. It's clear. Get used to it. Is that the tagline from Pepsi Clear? Was that the tagline from the Pepsi Clear ad campaign, Brian? No. No? I mean, I would be. <laughs> I, I would definitely be interested. <laughs> All right, well, uh, as soon as I get my monitor up here on the back end, I can join y'all. All right, let's go live. It's gonna drag. Perfect. All right, we got that going. And my friend Brian, let's get you a screen. Up here, sir. There's your screen. I'm uh, I got my screen. And let's see. How about a little? Ooh, yeah. There we go. Full screen. Ryan? Nope. Full screen, Ryan. It's trying. There we go. Hey. hey. I guess it's working, I can't tell. I'm waiting like 30 seconds for my, for the thumb. Oh, there you go. Hey, Brian, you work. Thank you. All right, um, cool, 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 cool. Well, in that case, uh, let's go ahead and say good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on a uh, lovely Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon, new comic book day, inauguration day for some. Where are my chucks? I don't own pearls, so where are my chucks? Uh, they are Batman Chucks, at least. I do love your celebratory North American team shirt featuring everyone's favorite North American Wolverine. And, and the ultimate, ultimate universe for Oh, winter. Oh, that is the. Oh, that is not my favorite. Wait, so that's. You're right, that is ultimate version Wolverine. That is ultimate Cyclops. But that is contemporary everyone else? Yeah, it's a very confusing shirt. Yeah, all I know is that they love America. Yes, yeah. I salute I salute your shirt, Brian. Not your shorts, Brian. I will salute your shirt. Um you don't happy go inauguration to day. <laughs> Eventually. Um I Can you do hold it in your heart. <laughs> uh I was more of a hey dude guy. Uh actually that's not true. Salute your shorts is great. Um but I do remember when Hey Dude premiered. <laughs> For someone who didn't own cable, I watched a lot of Nickelodeon, somehow. Not a lot of Disney Channel. Canker stickers or pins? Um, I believe on the black spinner rack, top right corner, the non-comic book side, there should be, like, one pin left and a pack of stickers. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I know where stuff is. <laughs> you know where you moved it to. No, I know where I put it a long time ago. You know where you put it three times ago. I do know where I put it three times ago. It used to live right up there on that display. Um, don't forget, always look out for Cancor, available on Ad House Comics. And uh, someday, maybe the vault will open and we'll have some Arcane Press issues uh, available again. Um, however, until then, um, if you haven't done so yet, maybe maybe head over to at Arcane Comics on the social medias. Uh, you can you can give us a follow there. More importantly, you can hopefully uh, actually I don't know Matt I don't know if Matt's like reposted it yet. Uh, but I did want to give a huge shout out to a good good friend of the shop, um, Mr. At Foil Nelson, for the delightful delightful cameo this morning. Uh, definitely made Not from made my him. day. It, 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 I, I mean, it. I'm willing. To, I mean, if Nelson, if you figured out a way to actually do cameos and get people to pay you for that, good on you. Uh, but more importantly, uh, thank you so much for that delightful, out of nowhere uh, cameo that you got the shop. Uh, we we love you, buddy, and uh, we're never gonna stop trolling you. Not not now. So 
Uh, eh, I'll cover that one up. Um, uh, but yeah, if you, if you, I, I'm sure Matt will repost it at some point. Um, but Daniel was very kind and, and got us a lovely cameo. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we'll be uh, seeing some more of those at some point in the future. Um, that's it. Sorry, I was trying to see if those are fresh for you. It's fun. There we go. All right, there's Nelson. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, again, Daniel, thank you so much. Uh, absolutely. I, I love our pseudo Jokerified cameo, if you will. <laughs> um, but, you could uh, probably yeah. find somebody who dresses up as a Joker to give you a cameo. Uh, I bet. Ooh. Is Bugmane doing cameos? That'd be worth it. That would definitely be worth it. You get a cameo from Bugmane. Buzz, buzz. Skittle scattle. It's very, very, very specific humor. Um, but if, uh, if you go shout out Doughboy's podcast, uh, <laughs> shout out Bugmane. Uh, Got to get some of those sweet Coca Pellies. Go on Spotify, search Bugmane Coca Pelli. It's worth your time. <laughs> if you like very specific kinds of humor. Uh, in any case, um, if you like comics, that's probably why you're here checking this out this afternoon. Uh, we've got a lovely wall of new books. Uh, not not the largest week of releases, but definitely a big week three for Future State. <coughs> oh God, I can only imagine like a cameo from Bugman. He probably like doxes you personally, <laughs> reads your social security number. Uh, he's got resources. Does it from inside your house. He probably what he calls me from my mom's house. Um, but, uh, you know, if you, if you don't want to spend all your money on cameos and you want to spend your money on comics, we've, we've definitely got some for you this week. A, uh, and once again, a third full week of Future State comics. Brian, did you do your homework? There's homework. Brian, did you read all six Future State titles this yeah. released this week? Um, we did for the first time ever get an issue two of Future State. Yeah. So that was that was pretty cool. Um, I, it, right. we'll, we'll get it. We'll we'll definitely talk about some more Future State. Um, got some big releases. Um, finally got a another issue of Rorschach. So one of the non Future State releases from DC, uh, as well we as the, the Batman cover Catwoman. To, uh, Superiors 12. We did get the variant cover. Uh, I mean, that's not true. We got the main covers. They just dropped the box that they were in, and so they all had huge bends and really ugly marks on them. So that same thing, um, the reason why we do not have Rorschach variants today is that same reason those so books were in that box. So they dropped the Alpha member box on the issues of Legion? They may have, Brian. They, they very well may have. Um, I mean... I'm telling you, if you put these boxes around Puck, they're gonna get damaged because he's got to build up all that energy from bouncing around. So, so that might have happened. Um, we uh, we we have some more King and Black Marvel Marvel marches on with King and Black three. Um, we get some non X of Swords mutant books. So, if you've been enjoying Cable, like I know you have, Brian, uh, check out that awesome. Is that a Martin Morazzo cover on X Force? Looks great. I think that's Moraz. I don't think, or is that a Andre Lima Araujo? I can't tell from here. I think that's Moraz. So. True Great Pacific. It is. Oh, very cool. Joshua Casara. Ah, yeah, well Dean then. White. All right. Well, I guess I need to figure out who this Casara person is because they draw very similar to uh, to some artists I I like. That's a very cool cover. I, I'm a big fan of giant sea tentacles. Uh, go Kraken. We're, I guess we're a pro Seattle Kraken shop because I don't have an NHL team I already root for. Scott, do you have an NHL team you root for? Are we a Kraken shop? Yeah, we're a Kraken shop. All right, we're pro. We're, we're, it, we're, we're Kraken for cra the Kraken. We're Kraken for Kraken. It's, it's a very good... I, it's a crack a good time. We're, we're not lacking for Kraken? Not at all. And all I know is if we are true Pacific Northwesterners, so we're going to love that team while it's new, we're going to buy a lot of merch, and we're going to love them while they're new. But hockey? Man. Hey, hey, I, I'm, I, I've been wanting to get into hockey for years. Uh, my parents' godson was a, was, was a 
won a national title with Wisconsin so when back did we in the get day? our own gritty. Ooh. Oh my god. Can you oh. What do you think the are you think if we could just have an anthropomorphized like tentacle, that's what I'm in for. I don't want a full Kraken mascot. Like oh, no, ooh. You want like a full Kraken mascot. No, no, no. I want people to operate. No, 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 no. It's it drops from the ceiling. No, I want I want a cute little tentacle. Uh we we, we can call him Tenty. Uh, you know, the the kids are going to love Little you Tenty. You want, like, a Day of the Tentacle sort of I thing? I 100% want a Day of the Tentacle. Like, legit, just recolor it. Use the blue and that red or whatever colors that Kraken logo is. Um, but, yes, just straight up buy the Day of the Tentacle from LucasArts, like, uh, like, like the University of Oregon did when we used Donald Duck as our mascot for my entire life. Um, but, yeah, just buy that from, from LucasArts. Disney doesn't own that. No, they just bought Lucas Films. They didn't buy Lucas Arts, I don't believe. So, so yeah, I want a Day of the Tentacle esque uh, mascot for the Seattle Kraken because Arcane Comics and more is all in for the Seattle Kraken. We're man on the Seahawks. <laughs> We're all in for the other team that'll play at that building eventually. Hey, I love the Mariners. They're not gonna play in that building. I don't care. I'm just saying, I love the Mariners. Wait, the 49ers are going to start playing there? Everybody loves the Niners are going to start playing there? Because that'll be awesome. Then I can root for a football team in this city. So do you want to be filled in about Kraken? Back to comics. No, I want to talk about stupid, stupid sports. Because I love stupid sports. Uh, in any case, we, 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 can all, uh, we, can all, we can all agree that we all love the Kraken and we can't wait to see our terrible version of the... Oh my, could you even imagine if they tried to like actually make a gritty? Like, you know, when they made gritty, they thought it was a good idea, and then it came to life, and we all fell in love with it because it's a mistake. <coughs> but, uh, like, you know, they didn't go into that going, can we come up with a mascot that people are just gonna dunk on? Hey, you want to start? <laughs> like, no, you, they no. thought they came up with something cool. So, I, I really can't wait to see what the, the Kraken have in store. I, I, I think it's gonna be very fun. <laughs> Oh uh, man, what do you think the Kraken's favorite comic would be? Do you think it'd be X Force? Um, <laughs> ben Temple Smith Squitter. There we go. Nailed it. No, he's a big Namor fan. Ooh, really? I feel like Namor would be anti Kraken. Those aren't opposing forces. Well, it depends on. Well, you see. He'd be pro Aquaman. Definitely pro Aquaman. Yeah. Well, depends on is Kraken evil or not. Ooh. I don't know. Is Namor evil or not? Well, according to X-Force, uh, Namor doesn't, you know, he, he'll fight like evil things, but, you know, they're benign. <laughs> uh, so, yes, Namor is in that. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, I assume Namor's in that issue then. <laughs> yes. All right. He shows up because, you know, members of X-Force have an understated adventure. Ooh, I like that. And then Namor shows up and kind of goes, what are you doing? Sounds, so, sounds like Namor. <laughs> Why are you in my house? It's... <clears throat> well, we've got, got plenty, plenty of those, plenty more of those. Um, I would say before we get into the single issues and the picks for the week, a um, couple, couple small pieces of comic shop news. Um, so as many of you may have heard last week, or maybe have have kind of heard around the shop. Uh, we are Scott. Can you grab that giant sign for me, please? Uh, we are an We're a bad official idea. retailer. We're a bad idea retailer. Um, so bad idea is is a what? We're a bad idea destination. Holy crud this is a great idea i love all of their marketing involved i love all of the things we have to do for this it's very good idea um but yes it means more work for matt kent i i i feel like matt kent has the like cullen bun light deal um so yes we are a bad idea destination um so if you are looking for bad idea comics um, There's like, 154 in the United States. Like ENIAC number one, which debuts in March, featuring uh, the beautiful, beautiful art. Is that Braithwaite's doing this? Of uh, Doug Braithwaite, you know, um, 
cover artist for the next Batman number two, the most first full appearance of this character's face. Um, on a cover. On a cover. Because <laughs> we saw his mouth last week on Justice League. Um, well, you also saw him without the mask well, on. Sure. Um, so yes, if but you're interested in, in March with ENIAC number one, uh, we will have that on the shelf. We will also have subscriptions available for these books. Um, so to recap for anyone who wasn't here last week, Bad Idea is a brand new publishing company that is doing direct market sales exclusively to you can see these retailers. Artwork. I hope so. Ooh. It's like an infinity. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the we've got we've got them. We are one of a few handful of, of shops. I think there are two shops in the state um, who are also going to be retailing them. Uh, we are working. Two or three. We're at least the only one in the sale area. I, yeah, I believe there's maybe like two other maybe in the state. Um, the point is, if you do already shop with us, you can very easily sign up for any of the Bad Idea comics. Uh, ENIAC is the first issue debuting in March. In April, we will get the second issue of ENIAC, uh, which is a four-issue series for what they're going to call, say, Series 1, Season 1. Uh, and then the in first storyline. First storyline. And then in April... We get the first issue of a three-issue miniseries called Tankers. Uh, this is looks like to be drawn by Juan Jose Reap, and Robert Vendetti is going to be writing this. Um, so this will be solicit or this will be announced in April. Um, the big the big thing though that you need to know about Bad Idea is that if you are subscribing to any title, you are committing to the full story arc. So if you would like to receive ENIAC number one as a subscription, you, you, get all four you are committing to one, two, three, and four. And that's because we have to order the same amount of copies for issue four that we order for issue one. Um, so whatever we order on that initial book, we need to follow through on issues one, two, three, four, or if it's a three issue mini, one, two, three. Um, if this it's the one is, shot, then you're just committing to the one shot. True, but but that's part of the deal. Um, another another big part of the deal is it is a limit one per customer. Um, so you cannot subscribe for multiple copies. Um, the idea is that for the first 30 days that these books are on the shelf, you can only, we can only sell them for cover price. We have to limit one per customer um, and we cannot. But you could come back in later for our second copy, but it has to be like a. So the way, so the exact language that they gave us is a limit one per customer for the first 30 days. Um, we have not figured out how we are supposed to be responsible to keep track of every single human being who buys that book from us. Um, so as of now, we are tentatively saying it is a limit one per day per customer. So if you if you feel so inclined that you love that book enough that you want to come back, you bought it on Wednesday, you want to come back on Thursday and buy another copy? Let's say you bought it on Wednesday, you went home really liked it, and you wanted to give a copy to a friend, you could come back in and buy a second copy. Um, or I don't care if you want to give it to a friend. You can put it in a freaking box. I don't care. What I care about is that I can only sell one per day, one per customer. Um, they did. They gave no specific language that we found yet about limiting people. The main thing is they're trying to make it so it's a book that as a reader you can get. Um, the most wide number of people. Yeah, um, but the main thing is that if you are signing up for any title like Walesville by Matt Kent, um, that is a one shot. You just in for that one, so you're you're fine on that. But if you want to sign up for say the lot which is another four issue mini series that starts I believe in July you are then committing to that full run um, but a big part of this is that um, we are committed to those initial orders that we put in so we we may may be ordering a lot of them um, but the idea for us is that we're doing, hopefully gonna have a lot of product um, moving forward but they're um, doing like second printing yeah I'm, I'm, I'll get to that just one second um, the main thing I want to touch on though is that you, as a subscriber, um, are going to be getting in for the full run of that. Um, the idea is that if you don't maybe enjoy something, maybe you don't want to stick around for the second series of ENIAC, that's fine. 
um, but we just want to make everyone um, aware of initially that whatever you sign up for, you do need to commit to that full three, four issue run. Um, and then beyond that, if it launches into a second series or a second season, whatever, um, that would be a new kind of commitment. Um, but as of right now, that's, that's kind of where we're sitting at. Um, as Brian did say earlier, uh, they are going to be doing some second printings. I did learn um, between last week and today that they will be continuing to support books. So say we, we've got 150 copies of ENIAC number one in. Uh, we don't have that many subscribers, but let's say we sell through all of those and we need to get more copies of number one by the time two is out or by three comes out. They said that they will continue to support those books. If that means going to new printings to do that, um, that sounds like that will be the case. Um, I still don't believe the, I still believe, from what I understand, I don't believe they're planning on doing collected volumes still. I think it is just gonna be single issues, um, but they will be doing um, some new printings to support books further down the line, you know, with our concern being that when issue four comes out, I wanna make sure I can get a one, two, and a three to anybody who walks in that door. So they've, they've said, that that's going to be something that they're committed to. Um, so as of now, uh, you you are hopefully going to be able to get in on a series later. Um, but if you want to get in now and make sure you have the four issues for it, um, you do need to actually uh, let us know directly so we can start that account for you. Email. Yes. Um, the main thing is if you would like to subscribe or pre-order any item from Bad Idea. Whether you are a box customer of ours or not, um, you need to make sure that you head over to our website at arcanecomicbooks.com um, and create an account there. Um, there is a section there, once you create your account, uh, where you will be asked to fill out four separate sections. Um, and essentially, once you've done all four of those, it will create an account on our website. Um, from there, we then just ask you to email us at info at arcanecomicbooks.com saying, hey, I'm interested in Bad Idea or I want to sign up for these titles. Um, but the main thing is we need to have you in our system through the website uh, and then we need to have a physical um, copy, a paper trail of you requesting those things just so we make sure that we've, we're not leaving anyone um, kind of in the dark on this. So the, the big thing for us is Head over to arcanecomicbooks.com, go up to the top of the page and click the um, login. From there you can create an account if you don't already have one with us. If you did order something with us in the past through the website, even if you are not an active subscriber, uh, if you create an account on the website, it should still be there. So go ahead and just log into the account, make sure it still works. Um, but yeah, create an account on the website and then email us at info at arcanecomicbooks.com with your request for your bad idea titles. Um, if you have any questions about those titles, we can answer it that way, uh, but we really just need need your help in making sure that you put that request um, through the email. That way we, we have a copy of it. Um, and then if you're on the website, we've got you set up there. Um, so we, we're doing what we can. We still have, I believe, till tomorrow evening to adjust our initial order for any act number one. Um, but don't worry, we've already got 150 copies on order. So there uh, will be two oh, copies. Um, we've got 5,000 copies on order. All right, that's good. Um, no, we only have 150, so get off your butt and order a copy. Go to the website, create an account, and do it now. This is gonna be this is gonna be like if Image Comics debuted with Walking Dead number one. It's gonna be like if if the King in Black showed up in crossover and punch Stan Lee in the face. It's gonna be the most important thing that's ever happened in comics. It's crossover, Donnie don't care. Um, the cover price for these books, I believe, is going to be, Scott, is it like $3.99 or so? $3.99 for cover price. Um, I believe, what was that? They drew a line. They drew a line at $3.99 until they decide to change it like DC did when they drew a line at $2.99. Uh, the point is, uh, there should be standard price books. I don't believe there's any you sort of like... You can a drawing? No, you can't. It's there forever. There's no such thing as whiteout or 
I mean, you could also just burn it too. Burn it all. Um, so I believe. Well, they did burn it. They, they made the new 52. <laughs> there you go. Um, so it looks like. Okay, so that's going to be. Of course, Tankers is bi monthly. It's going to take Juan Jose Reap like a year and a half to draw this freaking book. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, uh, the one shots might potentially be a little bit more, but I don't believe there's going to be anything above a standard cover price of about four bucks, maybe five. Uh, no variant covers to chase. The point is they're making comics to read and then eventually sell to a TV or to a movie because it's comics. Um, I don't fault them for that. That You know that's what's going to happen. Um, so hopefully this, this is going to go well for them. They just sit there. That's not true. You don't know what they're doing when you're not there, Brian. We've seen Toy Story. I'm sure I've seen, I've seen uh, batteries not included. I know what goes on when I'm not around. You should have said you've seen Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> What's Brave Little Toaster? It's a movie. About? Household appliances. They or come to life to then leave the house and then go have an adventure. They definitely didn't make a second one. They made three of them. What was the third one? The third one, uh... Well, let's see. So they leave the house in the first one, they go to Mars in the second one. Uh-huh. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure what's this thing. <laughs> so in the second one, a, uh... A, uh... A racist, uh... Hearing aid wants to blow up the earth. <laughs> Absolutely, it does. Yeah. Um, so, so that's definitely a thing. You can look up Brave Little Toaster one, two, and three. Uh, definitely, definitely watch those. Brave Little Toaster, Brave Little Toaster goes to Mars, and then I don't remember what the third one's called. It's actually just called Goes to Mars. Does Brave he get, Little Toaster goes to Mars. Does he get put into like a shuttle or something? No, or he just, they. Uh, they take a laundry basket that's attached to a uh, ceiling fan. Interesting. Okay. And then they play it out to Mars. <laughs> all right, I'm I'm in. I'm all in for this. Uh, we'll, we'll have to look that up alongside the movie I just found out existed on my drive here, um, River of Darkness, starring Kurt Angle, Kevin Nash, and Psycho Sid Vicious. Made in 2011. That's right, Brian. Starring the stars of Total Nonstop Action Wrestling is a horror movie. Nelson, look it up. I'm gonna watch this later. It's got to be somewhere. Um, you probably have already seen River of Darkness now that I say it out loud. Um, but yeah, he probably gave it to you. I. <laughs> it's on a thumb drive somewhere. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> that is that is the main the main things I did really want to hit on as far as the bad idea stuff goes is please make sure you go to arcanecomicbooks.com, create an account on the website. Um, you need to make sure you fill out all four sections of that create account, um, just so it clicks over and gives us a prompt to add you to our system. Uh, and then head over to your email client, type in to info at arcanecomicbooks.com, subject line, bad idea, content, I want all bad idea comics. And then you just hit send. Uh, I want we will... all bad idea comics from here until the end of time. That is what yeah. I. That that's implied. You, if you want to be explicit what I say about any, it, anything in the future, implicit. it is implied that I want it from here to the end of time. Absolutely, because that's a bad idea. Um, but definitely check out the website to create an account. Send us an email. Let us know. Uh, if you are in the area, stop in. We've got a lot of these bad idea promo, uh, crass promotional module. Man, the people at this company are really cool. They are so cool. I love how cool they are. Um, so if you want, if you want this, so that's K E W L. I mean, it's probably like elite speak cool, honestly, but it's fine. Um, let's see how their comics are. Or is that K O O L? That is a copywritten cigarette. Um, I'm not a cool guy. <laughs> K-O-O-L-E? Uh, you could do that. Um, but in any case, bad idea, arcane comics, let us know. 
out in March. We've got lots on the way. We'll get lots more coming in. Um, and we'll like make sure. Book, like the book lot. <laughs> like the book, the lot, the um, three issue miniseries starting in July. Four, excuse me, four issue miniseries starting in July featuring. That's not a oh, your favorite There we go. From the uh, ooh, that's the one Marguerite Bennett's doing with Renato Geddes, 1970s legendary filmmaker, began production of his latest horror masterpiece. Ooh. But then everybody died. I think a zombie apocalypse actually happens is what goes on. So everybody died. So, obsessed with bringing authenticity to the genre, he insisted on casting real-life occultists to perform a genuine satanic ritual live on camera. Then something went horribly wrong. In the bloody aftermath, the production was shut down and the soundstage was shuttered. Until today. Today. Yes. Or in the future. Or in the future. When the so, is. yes, this is the most Daniel Nelson comic book I think I've ever heard of. I feel like that was the one that when Nelson came in, we were like, this just seems like a book you'd be into. Um, Dan Cortez could be involved. So I don't know what he's doing at the moment. <laughs> uh, he's probably trying to hit that 50 point shot in the rock and, jo <laughs> rock and jam. <laughs> he wishes his name was spelled the cool Cortez way. Uh, they're very cool. I, I don't want to dox anyone, but all I know is our rep for bad ideas is definitely very cool. Hey, hey, come on. He's very cool. They're very cool is what I meant to say. It's V cool. They're V cool. Um, 11 oh. out of 10, bottle flip, dab, backpack dance. They're not <laughs> sus. Did he actually do the backpack dance? Who? No. I mean, I kind of did in my, like, way that I don't do stuff thing. Um, Alright, enough of this nonsense. Uh, let's talk about actual comics you better buy today. Um, Brian, would Growing you... Up, uh, 50 cents every day. Uh, hold on. Oh, live video's back. Scott, do you have Wi-Fi on your phone? Wi-Fi keeps dropping. Uh... Let me check. No, it's fine. The extension is never the problem. Don't take my Wi-Fi, please. I am disconnecting Wi-Fi devices. No, it's always that second one that gets so... Uh, it's trying. The broadcast is too fast. It should resume shortly. Yep. Josh Gad in that movie. Josh Gad and Cooper have kids in that movie. Ooh. Definitely happens. Definitely happens. <coughs> All right. Um, technical difficulties, I think. Quality is. That Do you want quality or quantity? Uh, all of the above, please, and thank you. You can have one or the other. Alright, well, we should, uh, even if we're down a little, little... If you're still out we're there... We're a couple pixels short, we should, blink should still once be good. for yes, blink twice for no. <laughs> Are you recording on the device? I don't know what it does. Thank you, Daniel. Does the sound, uh, sound fix itself? Hello?
guess if it's a really remix, we should have some person in the background kind of adding other words. says it should be okay again uh, all right yep. Yep. how's it sound Daniel Ugh. what would you consider the Snyder cut of Arcane Comics to be would we uh, add uh, would we just digitally add in like dark side <laughs> right. I don't know but like the Snyder cut it's gonna officially lead to nowhere and be a waste of your time. They didn't say it'd be a waste. They did say it will officially lead to nowhere. All right, so that seems I saw to that be they're working. making shirts for the Snyder Cut. Oh, cool. Actually, I want that shirt. I want a Snyder Cut shirt. It is like Snyder Cut, and it's got like dark side standing on it. <laughs> Clicking is back. All right. Speaking of Adam Sandler movies, click. That one's fine. That one's perfectly boring and fine. All right. Uh, audio still awful. <laughs> you don't hear comics. You read them. Well, if there are still any issues, please just let us know in issues. the comments Counts and we'll, uh, we'll deal with that. Alright, well, we'll, uh, we'll do the best we can at the moment. I mean, you could. Like every couple words, we should just go click. All right. Uh, try reconnecting everything there. And all right, if, uh, Daniel, if it's still clicking, just let me know, and I will just go ahead and get rid of the mic, and we can just move this along. Alright, thank you for all of your help. Everyone except Daniel Nelson. Everyone else has been very, very helpful. Um, Alright, well, now that we're done uh, dealing with this, actually I'm sure my Wi-Fi is about to drop out again. Um, so let's just get to it. Uh, Brian. There are things. American Runs out, Adventures out, we're in Batwoman, Catwoman, Back Lab, Black Life Cable, Cutting Edge, there's books. Alright, cool, we're done. Or should I actually let Brian go over these? Oh, okay. All right. Um, the the <laughs> the non comments have spoken, Brian. Brian, um, what came out this week? These I, things. I see that we have American Ronin number four, the Pete Milligan Akko um, crime ish comic. What? Ooh, there it is. There's them ninjas going. Um. Got number four coming out this week. We also have a big release with Avengers 41 Enter the Phoenix Part 2. So the Phoenix Force is looking for a new host. And it's looking for someone on the Avengers team, I guess? They, did they, Brian, did they address why it's not looking for Gene? Maybe? I don't know. <coughs> well, the Phoenix thing was part of the... It's a part of... Know, the super old Avengers 
Oh, theme. that's what they're going back to. Okay. Possibly. Ooh. I don't know, I haven't been reading that injuries. I know this was a big storyline that a lot of people were building to that, oh, there we go, yeah. See, now you got, ooh, cool new costumes. So, definitely get those now. Um, but yeah. But then there's the alien cover. There is a very, very cool, uh, who did that? Ooh, looks like Lionel Francis U, I'm guessing. To a very nice T'Challa and a Xenomorph. Um, we also have our lovely Xenomorph over here. Which we'll talk about later. Um, Barb Alien, Red Planet number three. Uh, the Jeff Lemire, Tate Bromble, um, Gabriel Walta story continues, telling a, a kind of origin story for the Barb Alien character, set during, I believe, the 80s. Um, Batman Catwoman number two. Um, once again, we get a, a black label release um, that is non-Future State, so a gorgeous standard cover for this one. Uh, as always, Jim Lee doing another great Batman cover, and that is the Travis Sherris set? Sherris? I thought the Jim Lee cover, just the way that it's done, just reminds me of All-Star Batman. I don't actually like the Jim Lee cover that much, I think it's boring. And I think Jim Lee drawing Batman's. I don't dislike Jim. I just this is fine, but like I don't know. This cover's way much, way more interesting to me. Um, what you mean? But with a standing around and holding a Robin figure. I mean, like it's not. No, Robin show necklace size. Is that what it is? I don't know. It looks like an act. I mean, it's got. It looks like it's articulated. Uh, yeah, Travis Charest on the the variant on this one. So. Uh, Black Label Batman Catwoman continues uh, the 12 issue series. Just making a series. reference to Robin the Toy Wonder from DC One Million. <laughs> of course you were. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna if you wanna get in on issue two of that 12 issue series, that's gonna conclude Tom King's run with those characters. Uh, issue two is out now. Um, Brian's favorite book, Black Cat Number Two, is out this week uh, with a couple of very beautiful covers. Uh, we've got. The Peach As Momoko always, alien. a Peach Momoko alien cover there. So uh, we actually have the queen on that one. Uh, and then the very, very hot on the internet den cover. I don't, this is, D is a artist I'm not familiar with. Um, artist Den, or excuse me, Arist Den. A-R-I-S-T is their first name and their last name is D-E-Y-N. So Aris Den. Sure. I mean, it's a cool looking cover. Um, yeah, Jim Lee's fine. He's fine. I, 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 here's what I will say about Jim Lee. Very nice gentleman, graciously opened a door for me at Emerald City years ago. It was very nice of him. Um, he, he, he drew some of my favorite comics. 20 years ago? 30 years ago. Uh, 30 years ago at this point, it's 2021, Brian. 91 was 30 years ago. Um, but also, but he's a very nice person and kindly held the door open for me at Emerald City. So I'll give Jim Lee that. Uh, you're so, not wrong. You're Black not wrong, Cat, Jim. Black Cat, if you want a nice sort of like high story that takes place during the events of King Black. Yeah, who, sh so why is it that she's trying to rip off, she's trying to rob Null? Cause they messed up her, her, her she was trying to rob someone in the first issue. Yeah. And they messed it up. So now she's going after him. Well, no, she was tasked with uh, rescuing Doctor Strange okay. from Null Thank you. by Captain America. But doesn't the, the first issue does start where she's just trying to rob something, yes, right? Yes, and, and then, then Null's attack sort of makes that... So now it's personal. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, well, uh, once again, Cullen Bunn writes another book. Uh, Bite Size Number 2 is out this week. Um... Uh, it was an interesting first issue. Um, kind of a batteries not included situation, if you will. Um, we have cable number seven. Brian, is that? Is it? it who is this baby? Because this this is. I, I don't know. I was gonna say because I'm getting saying, some Zorzinski vibes. Vibes. He's going around trying to save babies from a cult. Yeah, that's cool. If anything, it but just reminds he, me of they, that run. Then they, he finds out that that cult uh, has uh, somebody from 
Cable's past, but not exactly his past. Ah. Uh, running the uh, cult. Yes, yes, he does. Um, it's a person in a big shiny suit of armor. Huh. All right. Well, I do, I do appreciate that. Uh, it does seem like a fairly self-contained issue. Um, and because it's kind of, good, kind of. What's going on in seven was stuff that was happening before the whole sorts event, and then this is not picking it up again. And... But the real question is: Is it a KB? Is it a cable baby? No. <laughs> no, Michael, it is not. <laughs> Your question is me. Um, but no, you've you've been enjoying this series quite a yes. bit. I feel like this has been kind of a sleeper hit. That like, so, admittedly, I I never particularly gave too much about Jerry Duggan writing. Marvel Comics, because he started off with Deadpool, a character I don't particularly have any interest in, and wrote a lot of that stuff. That's fine. Um, but honestly, I really, really enjoyed Marauders when it first started, and I think from that point forward, I've been a little bit more kind of aware of what he's doing. So yeah, I, the fact that this, because originally, has he been writing this from the beginning? I think so. It, I thought Ben, oh no, Percy's writing the Wolverine book, that's yeah. what it, so yeah, so so yeah, I mean, I, I remember you being really into that book initially because it was like Cable and the Cuckoos and... Well, it's Teen Cable kind of doing some stuff and so you get... So you're getting your typical Cable book, but it's, you know, from a teen's pr pr perspective, which not only is he trying to go out and do stuff, but he also has to kind of deal with that many people no, know... No, a Cable. No. Him but a different version, and so he's trying to like... Because, yeah, he also hasn't had all the life experience that that previous one had, so yeah. it is it is very much... So, okay, I get it. It's almost like if a what-if character lived in our world. I get it. Okay. I'm starting to see maybe a little bit more of the appeal for that book for you. Um, all right, well... Or it could just be a fun book. I mean, more importantly, it's a fun book with a mutant character, so that's probably why you like it. But it also does kind of sound... I like the kind of the elements within that character that always lead to him essentially being able to interact with characters that you know, but that for them it's a new experience. So it's an interesting narrative kind of trope. There's a nice heart to heart with him and his dad in this issue. Aww. Which is one of the things like, okay, now Nathan, if you're going to like punch a wall, punch the wall with your robot arm, <laughs> not your human arm because it hurts less. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, one of the things I actually, I do really like about the young cable, I love, I just love the idea that he and Scott actually get to be father and son. Like, I think that's just interesting. Um, but it also is a point where I just, I don't know, I, I, I love Scott Summer so much now that I just like the idea of him being a dad. Um, all right, Brian, what, so we've got, what's next to that? We've got Cutting, Cutting edge, edge, The Devil's Mirror. Um, so this is... A new thing. These are Italian? Is that what this is? Okay, so yeah, these are originally, I believe, these were um, originally distributed in Italian and then have now been translated um, to, to English. So this is part of a kind of larger fantasy world anthology, from what I understand. Um, so the characters kind of rotate around in these kind of previously connected kind of world. Um, but that is out. That is the the first issue of what I. They might just be a series of one shots, honestly, because um, I saw Chandler got two, and the other one was a number one, but a different subtitle or sub. Yeah, so figuring it out as they come out. Um, what is that? What is this thing in front of you, Brent? Dark Wing. It's Dark Wing. Number two. Two. Do you remember getting? I we must have got that first issue in. Sure. I think we. I think what it was is we only got a handful in, and they it must have been out. So yeah, heavy heavy metal is back to publishing single issue comics. Uh, this is definitely one of their their new releases. Um, that's but not about Dark. I wish. Um, so so yeah, they they've been doing some interesting stuff. That Tarna book looked really really cool. Um, and then ooh, we have deceased dead planet seven of six. Well, according to the cover, it's seven of seven. According to Solicit, it says seven of six. So um, I have to imagine this is going to be the final issue of the second full Dead Planet deceased series. I thought this was the third one. Well, there was that like weird. Well, I thought there was like three series, and then there is was it sort deceased? Of... 
there's Deceased, which was the main book. Uh -huh. Then there was the Unkillables, which is a three issue mini from the perspective of the villains that happens at the same time. Then there was a. Then there were a couple one shots. Yeah, the, the point is Tom Taylor's still writing it. It's still canonically within that zombie verse of Deceased. Um, as always, we get a really nice, uh, just gorgeous, uh, kind of zombified cover there. And then the movie, movie homage bird. variant. Is that Birds of Prey? Yeah. Well, it's technically... Harley Quinn. In, the Emancipation of One Harley, Harley Quinn. Quinn. No, wait. What was the name of it? Birds of Prey, The Emancipation was, of was, One Harley Quinn? Yeah, so it was Birds of Prey the, or The Emancipation of One Fabulous... Like, one Fantabulous then, Harley Quinn. Quinn. Thank and you. And then they changed it yes. to be Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. So it's a live, die, repeat situation. Or uh, whatever that Tom Hanks, that Tom Hanks, that Tom Cruise movie. I just was like, I just remember people like, it's live, die, repeat. I'm like, that's not the name of that movie. Technically, when I watched that movie, it was called something else. And like a week later, it was called something else. Edge of Tomorrow. Thank you. Edge of Tomorrow was the movie I saw. And then they renamed it live, die, repeat. Which is a, honestly, a much better name. The movie's so good. You get to watch Tom Cruise just die so many times. It's great. The only thing that would have been better is if Halle Berry's Storm character showed up. That is my favorite part of Age of Apocalypse is when they finally kill off that terrible character. I want a real Storm, damn it. The casting job they've done recently was good, but I want an actual character. I want an actual good character. I want a good Storm. Why can we not have these things, Brian? <laughs> all right, I'll take it. It's fine. All right. Um, so we, we, we do have some variant covers this week for The Expanse, number two. Um, we did not get any of our main, main copies. Um, so unfortunately, we have zero copies to provide you with examples of. Hopefully, um, next week or the week after, we should be getting our replacement copies. Um, oh, and to jump ahead, we did also unfortunately get shorted all of our copies for Star Wars Dr. Aphra, number, I think, seven this week. Um, hopefully, uh, it'll be another situation where next week or potentially the week after that, we will get our replacement copies, um, but we have not heard anything that makes, it, makes us feel like we won't be getting them. So, we should be getting um, the rest of our Expanse number two main covers, um, the rest of our, oh, hopefully, yeah, Actually, hopefully by next week we'll have our replacements for Legion of Superheroes 12 main cover and Rorschach um, variant. Lunar's a lot better about getting um, damage replacements to us like the next week. Uh, Diamond, it's like a two week window for shipments. Lunar, we usually get it within a week. So we should have those. Um, but yeah, Star Wars Dr. Aphra, Rick and Morty Ever After number two, and Expanse number two main cover were our, our actual shortages this week. So if anyone was expecting those on the wall or in your box, they are not there at the moment, but we are hoping to get them there uh, in about two weeks or so. Um, so so we have Fish Kill number three. Ooh, he another heavy metal single issue book. And then we get into Future State. All right, Brian. So do you want, do you want to mention your most talked about Future State book while you did the poll? The amount of times I had to hear you go, huh, this person's not getting Future State Catwoman, but they're getting Batman Catwoman. Yeah, Batman, a lot more people are getting Batman Catwoman. They're not related and, titles. And so, like, a person would get Batman Catwoman. And the and, next Batman. And next Batman, but they wouldn't get Catwoman. Even well, though, that's because they're missing out on that sweet Rom V Catwoman book, according to you. So I'm like, if you were, if you're interested in, in Future State Batman, Future State Batman, or at least Gotham. Uh, well, at least if you were, if you read uh, Dark Detective last week and you were wondering what the heck was going on with that. Catwoman. So what Brian is saying is stop sleeping on Future State Catwoman because you're gonna want to read it. Because it helps inform what's going on with Bruce Wayne. Yeah, and the other thing to remember though is is yeah, the Rom V is doing Catwoman. He had been writing. Um, Catwoman just before this is continuing to will be continuing to write the character afterwards so theoretically a lot of the stuff they're introducing here we will see some 
something happen with it? Well, the Strays, which is a group that he introduced, you know, in his run before Future they, they show up here. Okay. So, Just so. Just a more future, kind of down the road version. Okay. And then, speaking of down the road future version, we, we get the book at the end, literal end of time. Well, the Nubia stuff is at the end of time. But the main but story. But that gorgeous ass Jen Bartell oh. interior art story. We, There's we also the very Kepper oh. camera. As that is, I like that art germ. I like when art germ goes a little bit more cartoony. Now, speaking of beautiful variant covers, show off that Momoko. Jeff. So yeah. That's, that's the Jen Bartel cover. She also does the interior. Yeah. Uh, shout out Becky Cloonan, Michael Conrad, writing that Immortal Wonder Woman book. And then that's the Peach Momoko. Yeah. So that, we have, we get, we get... We get Diana at the end of time in that book, and we get a Nubia story. Yes. All right. So and that's Nubia a so that's a double issue then. Yeah. So that's a double issue. Nubia is more closer to. What's the cover price now? Like six. Uh, six bucks. Six bucks. Okay. So that's 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 a big double book. Uh, and then we've got the triple book with next Batman two. Yes. So what's the backup stories in this, Brian? We get Batgirls. Girl and eh, Batgirls. So and then we also get Gotham City Sirens. So the Batgirls that are. There is essentially Stephanie Brown and Cassandra Gain. Okay. So those are the two. Uh, and then the <coughs> Gotham City Sirens in the back is Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and then a third person I've never seen before is so, yeah. some sort of android there's, person. Here's the, uh, the beginning of the Bat Girls story right here. Which they're in jail. Starting off in, it looks like it, Lee, it says they. The Magistrate Detention Facility. Um, and then jump to... No spoilies. Jump to... That one. I want to jump ahead so people don't see that last page. Um, and then, yeah. like As Brian said, Gotham City Sirens in there. So, um, the third traditional member of, of the Sirens... Or the Quinn is not in that series. No, it is, like you said, a character that is unfamiliar. To, to me at least. So will this character show up in other things? Who knows? It sort of seems to be that's where they're introduced and so it's like okay but they don't seem to be a person who has a long history. Yeah so that's Is there like an Paul Sevenberg and Hazes. Oh Emmanuel Lupacino is doing the pencils on that and that's why it looks like that. Cool. Yeah. Alright so yeah next Batman features three stories this week which is why that it has a and then it $8 has, story. Do you want to show the eight yeah. covers? And then it's got this gorgeous Doug Braithwaite uh, cover there. So uh, as I mentioned, who's going to be drawing any act number one from Bad Idea. And then as always, you got to assume that's a Francesco Mattina cover just looking at it. Um, so there are two variant covers available. Most of my copies of this were in that box that got dropped. So I have like a couple on the shelf. We should be getting more in if you need to have this cover specifically. All right, Brian, what's so, up next? What's happening, Nick Batman? He's just being Batman. Continuing Batman. that's, I'm doing, assuming it leaves, it continues from next Batman number one from yeah. two weeks ago. Continuing doing Batman stuff. Being in, they do reference in that issue that it talks about the other Batman, which is like Bruce Wayne. Which, the dark detective, perhaps? No, they just talk about they go like Batman, the other Batman. Yeah. Speaking of Batman, Nightwing had Nightwing. It was a good issue with the well, appearance of a, a Bat Batman character in yeah. this. So we did also so get. Quite, so I quite like this one. It's it's a nice sort of classic Batman. Story. And just remember, the last time we saw Dick last week in Teen Titans. Teen which Titans, is, which is from later on in. Remember, remember him from last week when he had that sweet new mask, and was wearing a more classic outfit. Yeah, but uh, I gotta say, love that chin strap. Yes. So. Not the only thing I love in this issue. So Nightwing is sort of in a. Not the only thing I love in this <coughs> issue. In a. Just saying. Batmanless. There's a steamy shower seat in here with with Mr. Grayson. Who we. So uh, Nightwing has set up his own sort of. 
headquarters in the abandoned ruins of Arkham Asylum. Yeah. And Don't mess with Grayson, man. So he's, you know, still trying to fight the good fight of, you know, protecting Gotham City, but he does it in the ruins of... He has his headquarters of the ruins of Arkham Asylum, which is not being used. Well, and one of the things I, I really appreciate in this book is I love the interaction between those two characters. Like, I just appreciate... There's there's that brief introductory thing where... No, no spoilies, but I, I do love that when they interact for the first time, and it's... The way Dick is, it's that thing where every time... There is a... There he's is just so Batman. There I, is respect between the Nightwing shows the new person who he doesn't kind of like... No. I don't, I don't believe that you should be Batman, but I'm going to respect you as a person. Yeah, I'm like I... I'm not going to insult you. I'm not going to, you know... It's your person. You're, you're fighting crime. Yeah. We're, we've got to do some stuff. We're working together. Yeah, I mean, one of the big things for me with... with with Dick Grayson as a character is I just it seems like it's like what would Batman do but not be a jerk about it and like it seems like that's how Dick is with so much stuff and I, yeah. I but yes I thought this was a great standalone issue um, not my favorite of the week but I did think it was a very good standalone issue um, even though it is not standalone I I can't wait for number two I want to see oh, yeah. how it goes it, it kind of like at the very end like a, you know it kind of has a nice good finger where there's a number of different future state stuff that I'm like, I would be okay with this being an ongoing series. Yeah, no, I, we're only into week three, but like, the more we get into this, the more future state has just been so much fun. That like, I, not, and like, fun in a death metal way, but not in a like, it's death metal, so it's just over the top, but like, fun in a comic book way? It's a fun book. I, I enjoyed myself yeah. as I read it. Yeah. Um, future state Shazam, number one, also out this week, which Brian, you were saying, feels like it connects to which book? Teen Titans, because Shazam and his group that is kind of seen partially there mm -hmm. also showed up in Shazam. Ah. Do you want to flip through that? I'm just going to check on this. So, they do make a reference to the, uh, the, teen, the Titans Academy that showed up in Who's the uh, Teen Titans? And then in March, we we're getting a Teen Titans Academy book. But uh, here they make a mention that the official title of that Academy is not the Titans Academy. It's the Roy Harper Academy. <laughs> Hell yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. And so there's kind of like... It, this is definitely a Ooh, different questions in here too. Yeah, but yeah, like I sorry to interject. This remember, like I said last week, that was the last time we saw Mr. Grayson. So, but you see, that question is not Sage or Montoya. Or Montoya, I assume. They also mentioned that there is a third question between Montoya and this one. Jeez Louise. So this kind of ends it at a interesting thing. So if you want you want kind of a magic kind of thing and yeah. I, I it's a good magic, but more importantly, like I just I I like just I love the end of this book where I'm like, oh, this is Yeah, it should be interesting to see where they go with the, the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Once again really dig in Future State as someone who had yeah. no investment in it, nothing going in other than reading Death Metal 7 and really thinking that ending was a great way to kind of get stuff going. Um, yeah. Uh, let me check this real quick before we get into it. So we the last uh, Future State book of the week is another big one. This, yeah, that's, that's another three-parter. Uh, this this really was my favorite of the Future State books this week. I, I really Worlds thought... Worlds of War number one. I mean, admittedly, it has things I love, old old versions of characters I like. Um, it's very much... It, it's, you know, it's John Carter of Mars. It is it is Planet Hulk. It is Gladiator. It is Kal-El of War World. Yeah. It, Clark in space, just fighting. Um, with some really, really cool stuff in there. 
Um, I, I do also so really this, like... So, so go Superman's for it, right? World of War uh, takes place God, so chronologically so after uh, the Superman of Metropolis book. Yes. Which so we this saw is, in week one. Yeah, so this is going to be much later down the road. But yeah, I just... I, I just love the so idea. So it essentially kind of talks about... So... Where's, where's Clark Kent? Where's Kal-El during this whole thing? He's on Mongol's War World. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Doing ah, some gladiator Mongol. combat. Hell yeah. Gladiator combat. Yeah, so I like I said, I, I like that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, for, for a second story, you get the uh, the Becky Clune and Michael Conrad Midnighter story, yeah. which is really cool. So and then you get uh, another story featuring Mr. Miracle, which was seen in Superman and Metropolis number one, but this story takes place chronologically after the events of Superman of Metropolis number two, which we will get in like Yeah, two so weeks. once again, Val Delandro, just gorgeous art, gorgeous redesign of the Shiloh Norman character. Um, but just beautiful looking book. Um, so yeah, we get that great story. And then, like I said before, we get a just, that is a Midnighter story, <laughs> ripping people's heads off. Uh, and then we get a fourth backup story in here, which is, that's right, a new Black Racer. So if you are looking for, uh, so eight bucks, that gets you four stories, um, which admittedly not- Three of them are shorter than the first one. Sure, but I mean, if anything, you're really getting this for the Clark and the, and, and the Mr. Miracle one. But the Black Racer and the Midnighter, I thought were nice little like, Here's eight to ten pages to just show you who this character is in this world. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, I just love the idea of old man Clark just fighting in Mongols gladiator pits. I just think that's cool. Um, so, so that 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 was that was the the last of the six future state books for this week. We're Would back you, to seven next week. Possibly, if you like old man to run. Oh. Immortal Wonder Woman's? Yeah. Okay, okay. There's a... It's not that I wasn't planning on reading that one. I just haven't had. I just haven't read that one yet. I. It's that thing where it's like, I know I'm going to like it because it's Becky and Michael writing a story that Jen Bartel is finally illustrating. So basically so. you are Wonder Woman at the end of time. She's got a lantern ring around her neck, it looks like. she got a, a bat. she got a, a utility and belt. So they're essentially trying to stop the... Possibly end of the universe. So the question I have for you, Brian, is this the same Diana that we last saw at the end of Death Metal 7? I don't know. Okay. So you heard that right, folks. Officially, he doesn't know. But she not only does she have to possibly <coughs> stop the end of the universe, she has to deal with a... Uh, a a new god. Oh. A rather giant new god. Very cool. Who had you know like lasers that shoot out of his out of his eyes. And Be cool. That supposedly didn't exist. Post Interesting. Death Metal Seven. Yeah. But then he exists that then time. Well, we'll have to well, remember this future state is a it's it's a out of space out of time maybe. Yes. So. But I've noticed that across, since we're in week three, there have yeah. been a number of different characters that I'm like, I haven't seen that character in a book in 20 plus years. It's just like, oh hey, do you remember like this thing from like a comic book from like the late 90s? Do you remember this comic book from like the 80s? Do you remember the thing from the 2000s? Here, this character exists here in this book. There's also a couple other things in the background I'm like, <laughs> Why is that there? <laughs> There's a specifically a thing in, in Marvel Wonder Woman like, why is that there? Mm. Well, I gotta assume there it's it's there for a reason and we'll yeah. just so have to check out number two, find yeah. out I hope. Fingers crossed. Um well we have officially run out of time on Future State for now, so let's move on to Gung Ho Sexy Beast number one. I believe this is from a blaze. So this is the second volume of the Gung Ho series, mini-series stories. Um, we also have the continuation of 
Hollywood trash number four. Oh, there are, there are, there's at least, well, there's at least this one gorgeous wraparound cover left. Um, I think we had some other stories. covers, but... They, they sold. Um, Hollywood trash number four. Mad Cave Studios um, keeps going on. Um, we do have another, the other big, one of the big Marvel releases this week, Brian, is King in Black number three, as always, with multiple covers available. Uh, so we've got the nice standard cover there, uh, the connecting cover there, um, spoily cover there, and the continuation of the really cool tattoo, the tattoo variants. Um, there is a ratio variant, I believe, All still made available. All by Herbe Village. That would be very fun. Uh, <laughs> but more importantly, uh, King in Black 3 is marching on. This is the, this is about, it says it's only going to go five issues, so I got to assume I this is, go six. I was going to say it'll stretch to six. Um, I believe today I did also read that uh, they have officially announced the end of the Donny Cates run, the Ryan Stegman, Donny Cates Venom run will be ending at issue 200. And they're only at issue like 32 right now. So, yup, whatever, two, I can't remember what the legacy number that they made up for that is. I did appreciate- No, they're going into issues 33 well, through 200. The issue number is 35. No, I was gonna say, I don't know what legacy 32 is. It's the, I did appreciate, they were like, they had, I read an interview and Cates was like, he's like, he's like, it just, it just happens to be this way. I, I didn't even know this was going to line up for issue two, but 200, but it's going to be big. So I... No, I think they should do issues they 32 just, through 199. They definitely could. Um, so let's just put out one, we'll put out like, you know, 10 different Venom issues every week. I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, hey, we're talking about books. I hope go to 200. Uh, how about Rodney Barnes and Jason Sean Alexander's Philadelphia? We get an issue, what? 12 this week and, then and the hotly sought after toddy mcfarland cover just cuz um so i think there might have also been a sinkevich cover that we we already sold out of but if you need that that mcfarland it's it's there it's definitely available got get that is that is actually our last copy so um all right, what do we? What is that? Life is strange. Partners number in time. Two point four. So issue two, maybe the fourth cover, or maybe <laughs> issue volume two, issue four. I don't know. It's based on a game. That's where I'm gonna. That's that's where I'm gonna end that one. Um. Well, next issue is two point five. Okay, so yeah, that it must just be it's volume two, two. issue. It's it's Four. it's very cool. It's it's very cool. Um, all right, Brian, we got Legion of Superheroes seven twelve. What is that? Twelve. Twelve. Is this is this the end of the run? No. No. We get a post future. Oh, so future state Legion of Superheroes, and then I know they're going to be continuing Legion after yes. this. So, is it so still the, Bendis? So on the, yeah, Bendis is continuing doing Legion. He's doing Future State Legion, but on the last page of this issue, um, has that it's continued in Future State Legion Superheroes, okay. which comes out next week. So they, so you, you, re, so they really do want you to know that you can kind of connect through, which I'm interested in because because Future State Legion takes place in a different time period yep. as the Legion book. So I'm curious to see who those characters are. Um, oh, we have and another. It's probably going to be your pick next week. Yeah, I know. It, it's definitely going to be my take of it. Well, it's not definitely. There might be something else that comes out, but I 100% have that book on special order. Because you're really excited that the Legion of Substitute Heroes is going to show I don't even know who's in it. I don't care what's in it. It could be absolute nothing, and it doesn't matter because Riley Rosmo's drawing it, so I'm buying it, and I'm reading it, and I'm going to love yeah. every nonsensical page of it. Future State Legion of Superheroes has the Legion of Substitute Heroes in it. And Even that's the, better. That's the first time that they've shown up in the Legion book, of at least of this run, but then it's the first time they've shown up in it. Since when? <laughs> well, you know, they probably showed them in the last Legion book, but then when was the last time there was a Legion book? And so, so yeah, so be here next week for Future State Legion number one.
Written by Brian Michael Bendis and masterfully drawn by Riley Rosmo. Yeah. So we have Looney Tunes 258. A another non 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 future state DC release. God, if they did future state Looney Tunes, that would be so cool. Uh, that would be the. Like uh, if they did future state DC crosses Lunatics. over with Looney Tunes, that'd be awesome. Do you, do you remember the Lunatics cartoon? The, the oh my mid, god. The mid 2000s, the early 2000s. Oh. Oh wow! Oh, I had kind not, of cyberpunky. Yeah. I had thing. not thought about that in a minute. Ugh. Yeah. Yep, that was a thing. Yeah. Coming to Disney Plus. <laughs> no. Sometimes it would be or, yeah, on HBO, HBO Max. Max. Sorry, it'd be on HBO Max. They, it's Jim Henson they own. All right. <laughs> they. All right. So we've got. The continuation of Miskatonic, uh, number three. Still have copies of one and two available. Um, Once in future 15. 15, which supposedly is... Dan keep Mora, going. who is also doing a whole bunch of future state stuff. Yes, uh, Mora is a big, big, big artist on that. Um, he and Kieran are continuing their Arthurian fantasy story. Um, Power Rangers gets a sweet Doctor Doom cover. And then... That's Doom, right? That's Victor Von Doom? On the cover of Power Rangers? Right, it's Doom. It's got like a green hood on. It's, it's gotta be Doctor Doom, right? No, it's probably Tommy. It's, it's Draco. It's not, it's not Draken. Draken. That's... That's Skull. <laughs> um, he's avenging the death of Bulk. I... <laughs> Bulk and Skull. Yeah. And then we have their um, <laughs> homage cover. Oh, yes. Legacy variant, that's what they call them. Mm -hmm. So this would be issue 61 of My New York Power Rangers, if they were still going with the original number. Good good for them. I'm, I'm glad they're sticking to that gimmick. Um, we have a, a new new number one this week um, from Brandon Graham, Rain Like Hammers, written and drawn by Brandon. So it is a nice, giant, oversized issue. Um, I believe, ooh, only five bucks, so if you are a fan of Brandon's at all, oh, that's right, I forgot he had Alejandro do the color editing on this, cool. Um, so yeah, just, you know, I do, uh, I do love his landscapes and just his kind of tonal stuff, um, clearly very, very influenced by some classic, uh, I think some Mobius-esque stuff, but I do just love some of this panel work he's doing here with uh, the kind of buildings. Uh, I know Brandon really took his time to kind of get ready to do this book. It took some time off before he got back into doing single issues. So I'm glad he, he was able to come back with something that is clearly so very much him. <laughs> that if, if you enjoy anything he's doing, I would definitely say uh, pick up this first issue. It should be a five issue miniseries from what I believe, or what I've read uh, so far. But yeah, we got a nice giant just beautiful oversized first issue um, I mean just look at that kind of stuff there yeah I, I have to admit that I uh, I do really love a lot of his kind of like design work even um, and a lot of his landscape stuff is very very good um, oh yeah look at look at that stuff there so if you enjoy Brandon Graham at all uh, rain like hammers number one is out now from image uh, this will be a five-issue miniseries. I would say definitely pick it up if you enjoy anything Brandon's done in the past, King City, Prophet, stuff like that, or if you are a fan of, say, just kind of world-building sci-fi. Um, that is gonna be gonna be worth your time. And five bucks for such a nice, you know, sixty-page for this is this this is easily a forty-eight pager. Um, so worth worth your money. Um, for the same price, you could also get. I mean, it doesn't matter how thin it is. If you're reading Rorschach 4, you don't care because you read 1 through 3. Um, so we do have our main main copies. Coming in. So yeah. this is the main cover. We don't have the variant. Yes, so this is the main cover because the variant ones all have that kind of Watchmen-esque trade. Um, but yeah, Amanda and Chris will make sure to get a copy for each of you into your respective boxes. Um, uh, and if you want us to, if you dig it enough, just add it to your subs. We'll get it on there. Um, so yeah, Rorschach 4, main cover out this week. We're hoping to get damage replacements for those variants uh, next week. And then, ooh, we've got 
Scumbag Issue 4. Dang, we're just cruising along with that. Uh, so the uh, the Remender, uh, who's drawing this? Oh, Boshi's drawing this. So yeah, more from the debaucherous life of the, uh, the scumbag character. Uh, I, I would definitely say... Mm, certainly not a redeeming character initially. Maybe maybe they find their, their story arc. Um, we have the incredible continuation of Seven to Eternity. Um, another Rick Remender giant generator. That's what he calls this stuff. Um, book. So, so back to the, the gorgeous world of Seven to Eternity with Jerome O'Pena still drawing that. Um, really great kind of sci-fi fantasy series. Um, I'm not sure if this is the final volume. I know it did take a, a while off, um, and I, I don't believe they've officially said this is the ending of the series, but it, we, I think we're getting pretty close. So this, this very well might be the penultimate issue, or getting close to it. So if you were... Well, uh, the 7 to return, they should never stop. You would think so. You'd think it would start at issue 7 and never end. Um, so if, if for some reason you managed, you took this off your list because you're like, I'm never seeing that book again, um, add it back on. We've got the last, I think we still have the last two issues available if you need to get caught up. Um, and if you also need to get caught up on stuff like Star Trek Voyager 7's Reckoning, we do still have copies of issue one and two. Um, I think that's a four or five issue. Yeah, something, something like that. Um, hey. If you like Voyager and you like Seven and Nine, I guarantee you Dave Baker is writing a very good Star Trek I think comic. They should, have gotten, they should have announced nine yeah. issues, but only released seven of them. That would have been very funny. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I know this. I know, once again, I know Dave is a huge, huge Star Trek fan, so I guarantee you he's, he's writing this very well. Uh, and if you are a fan of those characters, he's doing it respectfully. Um, and they introduced new stuff in Doro because those characters aren't from the show. Oh! Very cool. Ooh, as far as I canonical know, aliens. New canonical aliens? Yeah, as far as I know, they're new aliens. Sweet. So there's Xenomorph. No, I don't want to go down that road. Uh, <laughs> Alright, uh, we do have the fifth and last issue of the Stillwater Volume 1. I don't think... I think... I, I, have, I have a feeling this is going to get a Volume 2. Let me just double turn. I mean, it seems like it's got a decent conclusion, but I'm gonna be will. I'm gonna go ahead and say, like all image things, it's gonna get a season two if this one continues to sell well. So for anyone who uh, who jumped on this book and uh, was very interested in in continuing it, uh, this is five of the miniseries, so that should conclude that of the kind of twisted Chip Zdarsky, Ramon Perez uh, kind of supernatural kind of story there. Um, we've got. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 113, um, standard cover, and as always the Eastman variant cover. Um, so we are. Do you, I can't remember. Do you know what this turtle's name is? No. Yeah, some new. It's not. It's that thing where it's like, I just learned Jenica's name. Why do I gotta learn another one? Um, ooh, the 79th dimension of Null Time period. Um, so yeah, more importantly, if you've been reading Ninja Turtles, um, the, they're just continuing to build with this mythology, adding turtles, um, adding more people to it. Um, we will be getting, hopefully, we'll be getting number two of Last Ronin, like, next month? Or is it March now? I don't know. It's still technically coming out. Just, we don't know when. Um, we do have Jenica. Number Jenica two, number three. So it's the second Jenica miniseries. So if you enjoy that character, we are now in the second miniseries for them. Um, we got the third of the Best of Ninja Turtles collection from IDW. So I think we're we we've, we've got, I think we got Donnie, we got Raph, we got Leo. So I think Mikey's next. I think Mikey would be the next. So yeah, I believe Mikey's the could, fourth one. They could do like a best of like Splinter. A they play, very well could. A best of April. A best of Shredder. A I'll best say this: I've Keith seen Jones. them solicit through the Turtles. Hopefully, they'll we'll get some more of that. Um, we've got Transformers 22 continuing 27. on. 27. 27. Jeez, Louise. Continue of the three Transformers books currently coming out. Um, ooh, get fourth issue of We Live. So that uh, kind of interesting aftershock series. Um, kind of post-apocalyptic sci-fi fantasy stuff. Um, so I believe we should be getting 
fairly close to the conclusion of this opening arc. Um, let me see if they've got any details. So it looks like... Well, it says next issue. Next issue is five on sale in February. So yeah, I mean, I, I based on what's going on, they're, it's certainly building to something big. Um, and I, I would say maybe by that, uh, that fifth issue, it'll be maybe a, a breaking point, at least for the narrative. Um, and then we've got, what is that? Walking Dead Deluxe number seven. seven. So once again, if you didn't manage to buy Walking Dead four more times before this, you can now get it in single issues in color. Um, so I'm, I am very curious to see what happens when they finally just reprint the, the full collections in color. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting uh, kind of new series, if you will, if you want to re-release it. Ooh, sweet. Although, if we're talking DWJ, I want to see one little person here and just a swath of zombies. Um, so, so, yeah, keeps going on. Um, as Brian mentioned before, the pro Namor X-Force number, what is that, 16? 16. 16. So, 16. Um, who is it? Is Ben Percy still writing that book? Yeah, it's Ben Percy. Okay, so it's still the same writer the whole time. Have we haven't seen any any writer changes on any of the books yet? Have we? It's it's been the same. No, it same seems like most people are them. fairly. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, the penultimate issue. Is that four or five? Uh, this is issue five of six. Five of six. Okay, so that is the. Um, you look like death. So that is the Tales from the Umbrella Academy. That's the Seance story, right? Yeah. It's about Klaus. So that is the, the, the cover. Yeah. So we've we've got one more issue of that to go. Uh, no. All right. And then the so those are the all of the new singles except for. A handful that we've got. Except for the ones that here. we have as picks and the ones that we didn't have all that much and we already sold out of. That's right. So, Brian, would you like to start getting into the picks? Sure. All right. Well, you know what? Why don't you go ahead and I'm just going to pull that down. We have a Twitch channel. Here just you Twitch are, channel. sir. Why don't I mean, we talk about that one? Sure. So the first pick for this week is Maestro number one, War and Pax. What the heck is War and Pax? Is so this is so, so Brian, would you say this is a continuation cover. from the previous miniseries? And then there's that one. And then this is a writing statement. Ooh, got that sweet statement. So this is the second storyline from Peter David's uh, going back to the Future Imperfect uh, universe. So this is the second miniseries. So this miniseries and the miniseries before happens before Future Imperfect. So it's the origin. So the first miniseries kind of got you from Hulk to him getting the Maestro title and with this one it is more of he is trying to solidify the power base mm, okay and so there is a variant cover we did have which is kind of a spoilery um one which i don't have here because no it's the scotty young variant um, oh that's a spoiler variant yes that's a spoiler yeah. variant yeah, yeah that makes sense now <coughs> so I'm not showing it to you because I don't feel like showing it to you, and it's slightly spoilers, but... You're, so that in this case, you are anti-spoiler. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm always pro uh, Stephanie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right, so um, I believe... So I, I this, yeah. this continues on kind of... If you read the first miniseries, this is a continuation of that. Uh, so you, so you wouldn't necessarily recommend people just jump in. You really you think could they easily should. jump in if you just kind of, kind of 
know, know kind the of who, as a character? Know what the maestro is. You read Future Perfect. You want to get, you know, this is... So, so realistically, if, if you want to at least have maybe read Future and Perfect so you know yeah. who the maestro character is building towards. Yeah. Okay. It's the same kind of... It's the same universe, just a little bit before the original story. Perfect. But it's original, you know, storyline greater, so it's... No, I mean, I, I think the fact that you have David continuing to write it is always, you know, going to be the important part of with when it comes to this character. Um, and I think the fact that it's the same person who had pre written the previous miniseries. Yeah, but it is a different artist from... And so... Uh, no. Javier Pina is the artist for this... No. This go around. So also in this issue, um, as Maestro tries to solidify his power, he says, and he he wants to rule everything, not just his small section of things. So. He goes to Connecticut, or what is left of Connecticut. They make that joke in there. Um, and then he goes to Washington, D.C., which has a group of people who <coughs> are under the protection of Aaron Stack, the machine man, who's still around in the future. And so, I guess we could... Go on to the next thing. And she's so nice that you like, so I guess since this one's here, um, we have Matt's pick. He I breathed a body number one, the new aftershock book from Zach Thompson and Andy McDonald. Which kind of has a very icky looking cover. Icky is certainly one way to put it. So I would say kind of like, if you like, you know, body horror, this is probably up your, up your alley. I don't know how you breathe a body. <laughs> but if you want to know how you breathe a body, pick up the book. Take a look, it's in the book. It's not reading rainbow. I never said it was. Alright, well, I believe the next up we should let's do. Yeah, we can put a copy of Bring body in here. Okay. So Jeremy's jam for the week is yeah. we're doing like new number ones this week. So far, all three of them have been number ones. We have Abbott, nineteen seventy three. So main cover. Kind of a yeah, so that is cool. the continuation um, of the the Abbott character that Saladin Ahmed had done, I believe. I feel like this book was supposed to have come out last year and just got <laughs> delayed. So, but it's basically the the second second story arc for that character. I think the first one took place in like 1972 or one, just previous. So, uh, yeah, if you if you had been on the previous Abbott series, you would be on 1973. Um, but I know it did take an extended break between one and two. Um, all right, so the next pickup is once again another number one. Dave's pick. Dave, Dave's Dave's dish this week. We got the Crimson Flower. Yes. A Matt Kent. 
Uh, Matt okay. Kent. Uh, Matt Lesniewski has drawn that one. I that was actually honestly I I I really was uh, excited for this book this week. Um, I have been a fan of Lesniewski's for just relatively kind of a recent one. Um, I was pretty unfamiliar with them up until right before Ad House put out that really gorgeous Cancor collection. Um, the book they published just before that was actually Matt's book called The Freak, which we have copies uh, over on the shelf now. But if you enjoy anything like I'd say like Steve Scrooge or like a like a Darrow um, hyper fine kind of line work detail work, um, feel free to show that off, Brian. Um, but Crimson Crimson Flower is essentially uh, Matt Kent doing I believe a five issue miniseries um, has a lot of informed by a lot of Russian folklore. Um, but yeah, Lesniewski has just this very intricate style, um, just kind of really oh, yeah. beautifully rendered stuff. Uh, I, I would certainly say if you like, if you like kind of like Little Bird, if you like Ian Bertram's Little Bird, I would say Crimson Flower would be another great fit for you. Um, this is a five issue or four or five issue Dark Horse mini series, so we will get a nice collected volume at some point. Um, but yeah, this is the first real kind of single issue comic work from Lesniewski that I, I'd say certainly seems like someone to kind of keep an eye on. Um, let's see. Got the next pickup, which is going to be Dylan's Dynamite. We, so which is not a first ish. Well, it's a volume one. It's volume one, at least. It's a volume one, but it is not a single issue. It's Azadora? Azadora, yeah. Azadora. Who <laughs> does? Uh, so, we just got an Urasawa release last month, I believe, with Sneeze. So I don't know if they're getting caught up on like a back catalog of stuff finally, but that one's nice because we have not been able to uh, be able to always have their stuff available. So I'm glad it's uh, glad it's finally coming out. But yeah, I believe, I don't know if they've announced Volume 2 yet, um, but we should be getting a, a Volume 2, I, I would hope, at some point in the near future. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, if you're a fan of Urso, I'd, I'd say it's probably worth worth picking up. Um, the next pick we've got this week is this one right here. Here we can we'll just slide that back down and move here. Get the Scott scoop. So, uh, hey Scott. Yeah. You uh, you 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 pick pick the Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon, one shot, right? right. It's a one shot. Is it a one shot? Uh, no, it's a four issue. Oh, okay. So it's gonna be the beginning of a four issue mini. Um, is this where? Do you know what is what's going on in this one? Well, it's uh, written by Larry Hama. Um, is this like? It's gonna be. It's gonna be uh, uh, about the uh, ancient dragons and the heavenly city. Okay, so so Larry Hama's writing this. Is this? Do you feel like this is gonna be something that is a contemporary Iron Fist story or something maybe from the from their past? Uh, contemporary. Okay, so so yeah, I, I would say the. I feel. The, when was the last time we saw this character? I know Briss had a run with Iron Fist. Yeah, it had a few runs recently, but it's not been about the uh, deadly weapons. Yeah, exactly. So this is going back to to like the mythology of Kunlun, uh, maybe. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I more importantly, you've got Larry Hama coming in writing an Iron Fist miniseries. Um, so I'd say if you you know enjoy that character, um, you know it, it certainly probably would be something worth your time. Uh, I would definitely would say if you had read. The Ed Brisson, previously Ed, uh, written Ed Brisson series, or I think like Carrie Andrews might even had had a run for a minute, like a little creator on miniseries, or creator on a little um, single creator miniseries. Uh, I, I would certainly say that would be worth your your time if you are a fan of the uh, 
If you're a fan of the Iron Fist character with, yeah, of course you can do an Iron Fist. You gotta get a gorgeous David Aha cover. Um, and then the last pick for this week is, uh, is my, my keeper. Um, so my, my pick for the week was actually, who would have thought, uh, the collected volume of Chu, C-H-U. So for anyone, uh, who is unaware, uh, once John Lehman and Rob Guillory finished the, their original creator on series, Chu, C-H-E-W, um, they, uh, they, they went off to do some other things, but then John came back and decided to tell um, some more stories in that world. So once again, this is Tony Chu's sister, um, who we never meet in the original series. She is not present. Um, they, they mention that she exists, but they don't really talk about what happened to her. Uh, so this is basically um, the story of where that character was right before Chu started and kind of why they aren't necessarily um, around anymore. Um, so yeah, so so like Tony, who was a Cebopath, um, anything he, any food he ate, he could see his history. Um, Tony's sister Saffron is a Cebopair, able to learn secrets from who she eats with. So Tony is a cop, Saffron is a criminal. Um, so that that's the big gist there. So you you do have um, similar art style. Dan Boltwood does a great job of kind of homaging Rob Guillory's original style, um, that kind of cartoony style, but very much making it his own. Um, so yes, if you, like me, love that original series, uh, you are super happy to have that world come back. Um, I'm hoping that the trade paperback sales for this continue to go well, uh, and it, 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 it tells Image that, hey, don't forget, John needs a season two, so I need more chew, so let's all let's all jump on this trade. Uh, and maybe you got singles like me, but don't forget, this goes in the chew collection, so you got to get the trade. Uh, I'll have to get the hardcover when it comes out. I'll have to get the smorgasbord edition if it ever comes out. Uh, if they do a board game based on this, I'm in. Um, if, if, if they if they make it, I'm in it. So don't forget trade. Mm, if you needed a copy of the chew collected volume. It is currently, or finally, available now. Um, Amanda, do you, you just want a standard cover for Crimson Flower, I assume? We'll, we'll get you one. If you, if you want something besides a standard cover, just let us know. Uh, Amanda, Crimson Flower. Cool. All right. And then we have some other stuff. And then, yeah, so there, we do have a couple collected items we did want to show off, um, but please take a look and see if any of the picks from the week about. interest you at all. And then, yes, as Brian is, is alluding to, there is some lovely, lovely gimmicks back here that we want to, uh, to show off. Um, maybe add them to your personal collection, like you yourself did. Um, all right, well, before, I would say, before we jump to those, uh, I do want to just quickly get through some of the new collected volumes that came out today. Uh, and then if you don't mind, Brad, I'm going to go ahead and just let you talk about maybe these ones here. Okay. And uh, and uh, and then those. Um, but before that, I did want to make sure people did know about some of the great new collected volume releases that came out today, um, including volume eight of the... Al Ewing, um, Joe Bennett, incredible uh, Immortal Hulk run. This gets you up through issue 40. Um, so I believe there's like 10 more issues. It's, they're going to go to 50 on this, I believe. Um, and then so that's. What issue are they at in individual? So in individual volume, I want to say we're at 45 now. Scott, do you remember the last issue of Immortal Hulk that came out? Was it 43? 42. 42. Oh, shoot. So they're getting caught up quick. So uh, yeah, we're only at Immortal Hulk 42. So you could buy volume one through eight that we've got here in stock today. Uh, and then you just go off, go to the rack and buy 41, 42. You are all caught up. Um, but yeah, volume eight of Al Ewing's incredible Immortal Hulk run is out now. Um, we also have a volume two for the marked series um, from Hein and Haberlin. I can't remember what this book was called at one point. Um, but basically, um, tattoos have magical powers, and uh, this is 
very much continuing that storyline. They've always had magical powers. But now they have t specific magic? I, I, <laughs> I can't remember uh, the exact hook, but I, I would say if you are a fan of, say, you know, maybe monstrous as far as like some interesting fantasy or anything, um, I think in the... I kind of feel like some of the stuff that What's-His-Name was working on, like Sejic kind of has a similar feel, um, but definitely that kind of <coughs> darker darker magic stuff um, with some really interesting stuff there. Uh, yeah. And Fields, we, we'll get you for that immortal pull. Right along no. In Hulk, volume eight. Cool. All right, that is. Um, another nice trade paperback collection is we got the trade paperback soft cover volume of Pulp, um, the Ed Brubaker Sean Phillips Western uh, that came out previously as a hardcover uh, now is a nice twelve ninety nine soft cover. So if you missed out on getting those hardcovers when they first came out. Don't worry, we have Pulp back in stock. It is just a soft cover, so easily addable to your bookshelf. Um, that one I can put right there. Um, we had the release of Oni Press's Dryad Number no. 1. So this was the Curtis Weave. Initially, we thought to be a fantasy series that quickly becomes a more of a sci-fi series. Um, so we this, this is a very, I would say for fans of Rat Queens, um, or stuff like that that Curtis has done in the past. I think that's what they were really trying to kind of pull on for this. Um, but very much the idea of fantasy, but done with a little bit different of a twist where you are adding a little bit more of the kind of sci-fi elements to this. Um, but I, I would definitely say if you've enjoyed stuff from Curtis in the past, I, I would definitely check out this first volume of Dryad. And then um, we do have the hardcover release um, of Albert Monty's Universe. Um, so you need to say more exciting. <coughs> universe! <clears throat> so it's all in caps in the next mission. Yeah, so this was a panel syndicate series. So for anyone who is unfamiliar with panel syndicate, that was a um, basically a online comic book um, publisher headed up kind of by Brian K. Vaughn uh, with the idea being that you would produce stuff, digital comics, for a digital medium first and foremost, so that's why the format has more of a landscape, um, similar to when Private Eye came out. It has more of that feel like you're looking at it on a screen. Um, this, I believe, recently it's won a an... Garfield format. Yeah, it's a Garfield format. Um, so this won an Eisner, I believe, in 2019 for Best Digital, or it was at least nominated for Best Digital Comic. Um, this is very much kind of like I talked about before with cutting edge, um, this is going to be a bunch of interconnected science fiction um, kind of stories. So the idea is that we are dealing with a collective universe that we know, um, but each one of these kind of issues is a self-contained story that kind of connects back. So uh, I want to say, yeah, I, I, I imagine it says it's a volume one, so I'm not sure how much the work they've done past this. Um, but hopefully it's something that will continue to a second volume. So if you didn't manage to do any of the panel Probably syndicate digital about, stuff. Like they, so they have that and then, okay, once they get a next uh, large chunk yeah. of stuff, they'll do well, a volume The two. thing that's interesting with, with, with panel syndicate as opposed to traditional web is um, traditional web comics, you know, you get like a panel a day or a couple panels. These, these they actually release as like issues. So this was the, the interesting thing, unlike maybe some traditional uh, digital comics is this was conceptualized to still be in that kind of 22 page single issue format but still released in a digital first kind of medium um, so that is universe uh, that is available and then the last one I did really want to talk about um, today was patience and Esther uh, this is a from who is this flying circus who puts this out um, Oh, I forget the name of them. Or excuse me, Iron Circus Comics, pardon me. Uh, Patience Iron and Esther. Iron Circus is Monty Python. That, that's why. Uh, but yes, Patience and Esther, this is what you would call a uh, an Edwardian romance, but a steamy period Edwardian romance. Adults only. Um, Iron Circus does a lot of, I would say, adult or even mature content, um, usually like erotic stuff 
Um, but this is very much going to be a situation where you have a, a very beautifully illustrated um, story of two people during this era falling in love who happen to be women. Uh, and then there are going to be some very intense scenes of love and whatnot. Um, but I, I would definitely say, you know, certainly not for mature readers, but definitely not for kids. Um, I, I would say that it, it deals with all things respectfully, including some of the more sensual elements of their relationship. Um, but as always, anytime Iron Circus puts something out, I, I think they do a very good job of finding unique and different ways to kind of tell some very maybe mature stories in cases, um, but still very, just beautifully illustrated um, kind of love story here set during uh, the Edwardian era. Um, so yeah, uh, 20 bucks on that one. So that one will be available as well. Um, and those are some of the ones I really wanted to feature. Um, Brian's got a couple items as well that were collected that I'm gonna go ahead and just step aside and let him cover. And then if you wanna get into maybe some of the gimmicks, I, I think it'd be a good chance to do that. I'm gonna go pull all of these requests. Okay. Thanks, Brian. So we have a new or newer collection that Marv is calling the Days of Future Past collection. Uh, for 20 bucks, you get that original two issue kind of event. Uh, but you also get um, <coughs> a couple of issues before that, but also an end. So. You get X-Men 138, where Cyclops leaves the team. You're getting X-Men Annual number four. You know, X-Men teaming up with Doctor Strange. You get, you know, Kitty X-Men at 139, you know. Kitty Pride joins the X-Men. Then you know. You get, you know, these I feel like I skipped an issue of three. Yeah. Yeah, 140 with the Wendigo. And then you get 143. With Kitty, I think I'm brood on Christmas. So for 20, 20 bucks, um, getting some classic Claremont Burn Air X Men from the 80s. Fields, you can we can also get you a uh, cup patience and Esther. So we recently got in volume three for Young Justice, which is it, which includes issues um, thirteen through twenty. But if you haven't read any of the other other issues we do still have volume one which is the first six issues volume two which is issues seven through twelve and then this gets you up to 13 20 there should be three ones out of I think a fourth one actually check on one I know we have two and three back here Okay. No. This gets you the whole series. I wasn't sure if there's anything past past uh, each twenty. But if you wanted to, and you have a uh, fondness for the original series, or you just want a nice uh, contemporary DC teen series that 
that long gone. You know, okay. is in Teen Titans. You know, you can pick up all three of them and get the entire Bendis Young Justice run. So, it's a Bendis. So Bendis, David F. Walker. David F. Walker doesn't get enough credit for how yeah. much writing he did on that series. So David F. Walker, Bruce, John Timms. <laughs> Get, David F. Walker doesn't get enough credit for being one of the best writers in comics. Yeah, because uh, Volume 1 is Ben Bendis with Pat Gleason, who is now over at Marvel. Marvel. Um, then Art Studio is taken over by John Timms. And then John Timms is also in Volume 3. Yeah, Joe movie but yeah, if you, we also have uh, copies of the Naomi series, uh, what they call season one. That's the first mini series, um, and uh, yeah, you could pick it all up if you feel like it. Uh, because Marvel got the uh, license. Uh, yeah, Michael will get a Future State Worlds of War and Immortal Wonder Woman main copy, uh, main cover into your box for you. Yeah. So that is for books. We got some other <coughs> non-comic book things that we want to show off. We got. Well, uh, what do we? What do we need to show off, Brian? We got in some Darth, a Darth Vader bank. We got in a disgustingly adorable Darth Vader bank. So that, you could put it in the back of his helmet. He's got his lightsaber out, ready to protect your, your money. That you put inside of his body. Since Marvel is doing their alien variant covers this month, and there's soon to be a new alien series at Marvel. In the catalog now, orders available. You could get your get a rather nice. Xenomorph statue. It. That's a very good looking statue. Oh, yes. We've ordered, this is like the third thing we've ordered from, no, maybe fourth from Mini Epics because we have the Ghostbusters ones out there. Yeah. And I feel like I ordered something else from them. Like, these are just, I mean, so oh, yeah. what I like is that Weta is involved with this, so the sculpts on these things are just so well thought out. Oh, yeah. Like, the detail on that is gorgeous. Like, it's. It, Designed by artists hey, of film. Hey, don't get me wrong. I love Funko. I love pop figures. They're the best thing that's ever happened. But I also really like good toy design, and I think we all forget how original stuff can look. Uh, these are fun, but that's a gorgeous. Those, those mini epics are really good. I've been really happy what they've been doing with those, so um, and... that's just me. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Then we have an action figure. Heck yeah, we do. We got Richard Simmons. Heck yeah, we've got a clothed Richard Simmons. Yes. Yeah. Cloth clothes, you know, a nice shiny tank top. I have one question though. NECA, where are the rest of where are the silver foxes? If I don't get a Sal Pacino action figure, I'm done buying your products. I only own like one NECA product, so I don't think they're gonna miss my money. But if you made a Silver Foxes line, holy crap. Well, you see, he turned, you need to make one of Richard Simmons from each one of the videos. Yes, I want one. Which, I want... What outfit is this? I'm not, I don't know. Is this uh, Sweaty Oli's one, two, three? You know. <laughs> Which era of, you know, Richard, is this, you know, Late 80s? Is this early 90s? Late 90s? Early 2000s? There's no way to know. Yeah, so I it, just do love that he's got a rocket six pack. 
Yep. So if you do, get, rock and six pack. yeah, if you get the figure, you you can uh, check out Richard Simmons' abs. But I did. Th- Ryan, this is not Arcane After Dark. You have to say butt. His abs. Oh, sorry. I thought you said something else. I, didn't say, <laughs> I said abs. Almost got you to say it. Almost. I did think that it was kind of weird that on the top there's a slightly menacing Richard Simmons photo. I love it. That's that's the Richard who knows that you aren't listening. Alright, so three three great new products available um, on, on the shelves now. Uh, if you if you if you absolutely must get that. Um, we did also get in some really cool um, King Kong figures, uh, previous exclusive black and white version and the full color ones. Um, I believe we also recently got in, oh, big, literal big news. Uh, we got some new gaming product in. One second, I gotta make sure everyone actually sees this because I didn't think we'd ever see these again. But check it out, Brian. We got a big game. That you can hunt down because you're a big game hunter. So, we finally got back in stock the arguably most popular board game or game here in the shop. That's right, we got the behemoth that is Gloomhaven back in stock. Uh, there are multiple. Gloomhaven games going on in this store. Um, shout out Dave, Jeremy, Sean. No, no, they still, this is like one of the things they still do. They, not, not, you said that it's going on in the store. Oh, not currently at not the store. Currently in the but store. as far as members of the store are concerned, there are multiple people playing this insane behemoth of a game, which arguably might be the greatest board game of all time. Um, the amount. It's better than Monopoly? Monopoly sucks compared to Gloomhaven. Um, yes, this game is $140, however, the amount of campaigns that you can play in this, like, there are, our friends are still playing their first, in a lot of campaigns, you can play this game for two years, um, the amount of adventures, the amount of sheer just, like, gaming you do, this is like playing, like, wow, this is like playing a dungeon crawl, um, with your friends, so you, you get characters, you build them up, they, they earn their powers, but more importantly, we didn't think we'd see this game back in stock for a while. So we did finally somehow get some of these in. Also, speaking of things I didn't think we should have that we somehow got back in stock. Scott, I'm gonna check. We, we, we also got a recent D&D release in. And I'm gonna go check to see if we still have it on the shelf because I'd like to offer it to the viewers of the stream first and foremost. But if you need to get an insane copy of Gloomhaven, we do have a copy. I'm not shipping this, so you gotta come pick it up. Um, it is worth it though, if you have been needing to play a game, uh, needing to get into something big, literally, uh, this is one of the biggest games we offer. Uh, and one of the other cool things is, we got this in stock right after we just recently got the Source Point Press one shot for Gloomhaven. Do we still have a Tosh? Do we still have a Tasha's up there? Uh yeah. Uh yeah, you heard right. We somehow have a single copy of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything in stock. Uh I don't know how we got one. Uh we ordered we ordered reordered a lot of them. Um because that book basically sold out the week it came out. Um D D could not get enough uh Wizards couldn't get enough of them published to keep up with demand. Um but that's right. We have the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Um we have a single copy left in stock. We got back in stock, um, but that is the new uh, rulebook for 5th edition D&D that is kind of redefining or allowing you to kind of redo some of your characters. Um, and so that has been one of the hottest releases we've got in a long time from D&D. Uh, we did manage to get a single standard copy back in. All right, cool, Fields got it, done. That was easy. All right, I'll go grab it off the shelf. Um, so yeah, that is, that's, that's the main gaming stuff I really wanted to show off.
Yeah. All right. Proof, 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 proof in hand. There, there y'all go. Last one, and it's gone. All right, it's added to the pile that says field on it. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, as always, um, we, we try to get as much of the new stuff in. Um, we are still working on getting a lot of the pre-orders in for the next Magic release come March. Um, we are unfortunately, disappointingly set on our uh, Pokemon Vivid Voltage releases, uh, which we just got hammered on. That. So, um, unfortunately, that's going to be an interesting release. Um, but as far as the next Magic one that comes out in March, we should have full stock of that available. Um, as far as any other new gaming stuff that comes out, if you hear about it and you want it, tell us. Um, head over to at Arcane Comics on all social media. You see something posted on Twitter, just at us, just mention us. Uh, we'll, we'll find it. Um, slide into the DMs with any requests you have at Arcane Comics on all social media. Send us an email. Send us an email at info at arcanecomicbooks.com. Um, you could even, even call us at 206-781-4875 here at the shop. Leave us a message or hopefully We'll pick up and actually just take the if message. If you do it right now, you could even hear the phone ring on the You lunch. could. Let's see if it works. Eh, someone will call. Um, however, if, if you need to get anything um, game related, please just let us know. Um, we will do what we can to go out and get those games, bring them into the shop for you, whether that's through one of our now five, four or five different gaming distributors that we've been working with. Um, well, we did just get a restock on a bunch of supplies, so if you need, like, the fields, you, you got that Tasha's, you need some new dice, we got dice back in. Um, got a lot more supplies that came back in. Still working on getting some of our comic stuff restocked from the big holiday sales. So if there's anything that you need to get, let us know. We can put reorders in for you. Um, we did just get a nice restock on a bunch of Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, omnibus volumes, so those nice little soft cover volumes that collect all three. We've got Promise and Search back in stock, so that's volume one and two. We've got the large fancy library editions for a bunch of those. Um, got some Chorus stuff back in. Um, there was another recent restock on some other All Ages stuff. Um, so definitely, if you are able to stop here into the store, please do that. We are still here every day, uh, 12 to 6. Scott gets here at 10 a.m. on Wednesday, so you can always come in early on Wednesday. Um, but we are here from 12 to 6 every day. Uh, you can still come on in, just throw that mask on, use that hand sanitizer right at the front door before you touch anything. Um, and uh, you're welcome to come in. If we can't find it on the shelves out there for you, we're more than happy to check our storage. Uh, we are still doing it where uh, after a book has been out for about a month, it usually ends up on the racks behind the counter, but we're more than happy to pull stuff off of there pull stuff out of storage for you. Um, if you, once again, if you are still trying to get caught up from pandemic shutdown, we've got back issues that go all the way back to there, if not further. Um, we also just recently got in some very, very interesting older books. So if you are, let's say, a collector of some classic comics, we're, uh, we're working through some stuff now. But just to give some, some people a preview, these items are not for sale on the stream. You must come into the store to get them. But if for any reason you like classic comics, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up available soon here in the shop. So, I don't know, maybe you're a fan of, let's say, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number six. Uh, that's a Mirage printing. Uh, that's a $30 book. Um, but I'm not selling these on the stream. Uh, you can certainly inquire about them. Um, but if you have any interest in filling old Turtles collections like, you know, number 10, third appearance of Shredder, you can grab that from me. I'm only asking 30 bucks for it. Um, also, got some ones that still haven't quite been priced out yet. So if these aren't in your collection, let me know. Um, so yeah, we did get some turtle stuff in. We got some more stuff well beyond that. Um, but I'm gonna hit the back of the box, which is I know what you're waiting for. So maybe, maybe you need to add some of these keys to your collection, cause you know, those days from long ago need to help out. So maybe, maybe you don't want to buy that trade back there. Maybe you want to buy the actual book. Hit me up. 
What else is in here? <gasps> oh, Miss Pride, just hanging out. Um, you know, we processed through some stuff. Ooh, early X Factors. Oh, you don't need a facsimile edition. We're selling the real thing behind the counter. Um, and then, oh, hell yes. You know I have this book in my collection at home. But if you need to get a copy added, eh, $19.99. That's a pretty good price. Mm, let's see, what else? Oh, dip. Preacher number one's hanging out. So, yeah, basically what I'm saying is we finally pulled some stuff out of the old bins and we got them priced out. So, if you love America like Brian's t-shirt does, you might need these. Just casually holding Wolverine number ones in my hand with plenty more of things in here. Um, and then the last oh, thing... Oh, Michael, since we're not selling them on stream. We're not selling them on stream, but if you want to walk back in here, you were here like 10 minutes ago, dude. Um, let me know. Or maybe like Matt, you need a second Gargoyles number one in your collection. Um, these are all things that exist here in the store and will ever so slowly make their way out. Um, <laughs> I'll leave the box out for you, Michael. Um, but if you needed, let's say, I don't know, someone's first appearance, you could grab it. Or maybe more than that, you need to fill up your what if collection. What if Punisher killed the Spider-Man is not in this collection. It was, but it's not here now. Brian, why is it not here? Because I took it home? That's right. Because somehow Brian didn't have that in his what if collection. So if you have interest in stuff like this, like Michael, head on into the shop, the physical shop. Uh, we can show you what's going on in here. We've got a whole bunch of stuff we're still working through. Um, if you you got a collect, if you got a you got some old turtles to work through, holla at your boy. Or more importantly, if you need to fill out your Alpha Flight collection, definitely get at me. We got the first fifty something issues back. No, in we stock. have the first. Well, we have the first forty issues. Thank you. Every issue, and then after issue forty gets. Sporadic, but we have issues. Don't worry, they're not in as good as condition as the ones I have at home, or else uh, they'd be at home with me. Between These 40 ones are, and 99, for you. we have like half of those. Yeah, so, but but realistically, you know, we're, we're, we're working through a lot of things, so beyond a bunch of the great new stuff, we are really trying to help you out, get into some of those older items you might need, like, oh, where's that cover? <coughs> Yeah, like check out, look at that amazing splinter cover. Love it. Um, so if there are things that you're looking for, let us know. Let us know because as we're searching through things, if it's like, oh, as we're going through, like, hey, don't we know that, you know, so-and-so is looking for, you know, exactly. Spider-Man from the 80s or like, hey, this person, we know a person who's trying to complete like Alpha Flight or kind of like they want all sorts of like Ninja Turtles. All so. that stuff. Or, huh, huh, huh. You just, you know, huh, need to get that one. Huh. That's the worst Beavis and Butt I think I've ever done. So, which colors are those? Which colors? Yeah. The, uh. The. Yeah. So, there's a oh, couple Oh, it's the silver one with no. the. The there are a couple different things. Uh, there's a couple. Oh, is it the glove that's the, different? There's like a pink glove and a, like okay. a blue glove and a green glove. I think. Is that what it is? I think that's. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, but yeah, uh, you know we're 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 doing our best to try to entice y'all to to keep coming in and keep finding some new stuff. So if you just you know casually want to hang out with my friends and I, you're welcome to stop in. We're just doing nothing. Just being real cool, hanging out. Mm, just doing nothing. Oh, what up, Wendigo? Love you, dog. Oh, that's a good cover right there. Ooh, and then, yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So, you know, like I said, uh, we want you to come into the store and check some stuff out. Um, so please keep an eye on the social medias as well. Um, definitely head over to at Arcane Comics on all of the socials, and we will uh, we'll we'll let you know what's going on. Um, <laughs> well, you get back here. <laughs> all right. So for now, I'll go ahead and set these 
back here until Michael shows up. Um, but beyond that, we will uh, we'll we'll be here. We'll still still kicking around. Um, I'm gonna throw this Beavis and Butthead book back in here. You'll gently place it. No, I'm gonna throw it in here because we have so many of them. I don't care. I'm just so casual with my sweet Ren and Stimpies. I. The sad thing is I have like so much of this stuff at home and I'm now going, this is how much my crap is worth? Yes. We're all doing that. We're all going, what? It's, okay, cool. Um, well, the whole thing is, the reason why it's so much is because the people who got rid of it are still kind of like, that's I right. it back. We've got purchasing power, us, well, me in particular, us, us single non-kid having people in their late 30, nearly 40s. I've got disposable income. I don't have disposable income, but if you buy this stuff for me, I might. So, hopefully, uh, hopefully that'll that'll help you out. I more than anything, uh, you know, we're we're still working on getting everything available for you. As always, if you have interest at all in the Bad Idea comics, please please let us know. We are we are happy to help you out. We would love to get these comics into your hands or to. Maybe your friend's hands or whomever else needs them, but limit one per day. Um, until then, we hope to see you on uh, the socials. Let us know if there's something coming out that you're interested in. Sure. Are we um, going to talk about what we're possibly doing next week? No, there's nothing going on next week, okay. Brian. There's no reason we're not having a stream next week. Um, in fact, actually, I did want to tell everyone now, we will not be having a Facebook New Comic Book Day stream next Wednesday. We will instead be having a happy birthday stream featuring new comics because... It's my birthday next Wednesday. That's right. Next Wednesday, January 27th, is Brian K. Robinson's <laughs> birthday. Uh, he does love gift certificates to Arcane Comics and more for his presents. So feel free to give us a call. Uh, we can get him started on an account. Or more importantly, Brian loves green Gatorades. Um, he's got a list of what if comics he still doesn't have. Um, that's not true. It's like two of them. No. Is it a decent amount? I, the point is, uh, next week we will not be having our standard new comic book stream. We will be having a celebratory birthday stream for everyone's favorite host of this show and the only true MVP of Arcane Comics for the year of 2020, um, Brian K. Robinson. We will be celebrating his 21st birthday. That's right, folks. Brian's finally 21. So. I'm only 21, but I've been reading comic books for 30 years. It's quite the conundrum. Um, but yeah, so please tune in next week. Uh, we'll, we'll have some, some fun, fun activities, some festivities. Um, we'll definitely be talking comics, but we'll 100% be talking Brian K. Robinson. So if you, like me, love this gentleman and you want to help him have a great birthday, where he, he can celebrate. Um, please, please join us back here and definitely head over to twitch.tv slash professor underscore zero. Give, uh, give it a, 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 a follow, a follow and a, a subscribe and a, a I'm no, almost at 40 notification. <laughs> Point is, Brian, uh, Brian got in some tan tan last week. Um, hopefully he'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue on with this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been a it's been a real real good time uh, having you around, Brian. And I, I think if uh, if if next week being your birthday is any excuse that is the excuse we needed at all to celebrate you, uh, I'm more than happy to take it. So um, please please join us next week where we celebrate this gentleman's birthday. Uh, we talk about the fourth week of Future State Comics and nothing else. So I, I would say. If, uh, if you have any interest at all, before then, maybe you could do a little homework yourself um, to celebrate for Brian. Read your favorite What If comic. Uh, you you, you want to celebrate? No. Maybe. They need to figure out whatever happened to Fire Girl's baby. Well, that's, that's the real present. Um, you know, but, but next week, make sure you get yourself a green Gatorade, have it cracked and ready to go. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe some celebratory Oreos. Um, Brian, Brian, what else are you you're you're a big fan of? <coughs> any sort of food, any sort of holiday-related food gimmick. So I don't know what, I don't know. They don't make Martin Luther King Day no. cookies, do they? They really should. You could get some Valentine's Day stuff early. <laughs> there you go. Get some Valentine's Day stuff early from Joanne's Fabrics. Joanne 
fabrics, and more. I'm not sure if we. They only sell fabrics. They don't there's, sell more. There's no more there. Okay, no more there, but there's definitely more here. More Momoko, and birthday celebrations for Brian K. Robinson. So, uh, please, please tune in next week, uh, as you do every week, to to join you us for these. get some new action figures and you know play them. Yeah, yes, that is that is another Brian thing you could do. Go buy yourself an action figure. Go buy yourself a toy that you really like. Open it, play with it, and take a funny picture. There you go. That is the way you can celebrate and honor Brian K. Robinson right here. Um, you know, I, I would say there's so many different ways we can, we can embrace this, and we'll try to do all of them next week. Um, so until then, please, if you have not, head over to... Oh, I hit it over here. Head over to twitch.tv slash arcane comics uh, and, uh, you know, wait for, for some stuff over there that might happen. Who knows? I don't know. My Twitch has been in and off. Um, but more importantly, uh, you can always head over to at the Kenshi on Instagram or I think that's also Twitter. I don't do much over there. Um, you can go over there. I, I do dumb stuff. But more importantly... There is a link in my bio to the Love Family Fundraiser. Uh, once again, still have some, some lovely friends of the shop who certainly could use some help still. Uh, and if you have any means to, to spare, please head over to the case sensitive bit.ly link here. Head over to randallovesalon.com, get some products, maybe schedule an appointment, or head on over to at the Kenshi link in bio. Um, but that is definitely worth your time and your resources if you have it. But more importantly, Tune in next week. Well, wait, sorry. Do the good one. Uh, more importantly, tune in next week where we have some fun. Maybe we blow out some candles together. I mean, we don't actually blow them out. That's hmm, off to the side, maybe. Well, um, we can use some like canned air. There we go. We'll use canned air. Um, but but yes, ne next week next week will be a birthday celebration plus some comics. So. If you enjoy comics, show up next week. But more importantly, if you, like me, want to celebrate this gentleman here, show up. Uh, we'll have some fun. Um, but, but more importantly, thank you for joining us this week. Um, thank you to everyone who requested any items you saw on stream today. Um, thank you to anyone who is feverishly on our website right now, creating an account and then emailing us directly at info at arcanecomicbooks.com because you want bad idea comics. Thank you for that as well. Cause you um, like bad ideas. We love bad ideas, and we are nothing but. So remember, bad idea equals arcane comics and more. Um, I feel like that's enough burying us. Uh, so, um, as always, thank you to everyone who has joined us, and uh, thank you for continuing to support us through all this. And you know, it's new. It is literally a a new day today. Um, I woke up in a better mood than I did before, and honestly had a nice, healthy, emotional cry this morning. Got a lot of out. We we sat through every day of that four years, and we earned this. So, <sighs> feels a little bit lighter today. Thank you for joining us. I love you, and uh, I love you, Brian. I can't wait to celebrate your birthday next week. <laughs> All right, say bye, Brian. Bye, Brian.